Here we go. Happy Father's Day, everybody. City Center Church, would you help me welcome my favorite singer of all time, the one and only servant of the Most High God, John Schlitt. Come on, brother. Do you realize there's a war going on right now? In the spirit, there's a war going on. There always will be until Christ comes back. And we had a song that basically was the title of one of our albums. If it was up to me, every album from then on would have been that title. It's called This Means War. And we believe there's a war going on and it's happening today, but we are going to win. We are winning today right now because we have Christ. Do you believe that? Then let's, I I, want to hear it. Are we ready? Let's do it. Come on. saved. Praise God. Now, does that mean we're supposed to just sit back and say, I'm saved and I'm okay? Or do we find out for each one of us what's beyond belief? Come on. 
I believe that he is God. He has a plan for us. And he loves each one of us. And this next song was, uh, I don't even know what record it was on. But it was one of my favorite songs of all time. It's just called Lovely Lord.
Okay. Now we know I'm not perfect. Now we know, even though it was one of my favorite songs all the time, I can't even sing it. But you guys did a great job. Thank you so much. Are you ready to praise the Lord a little bit longer? This next song is, I, I think you all know it. I might even know it. So let's sing it together. You ready? love this church. Everybody, I know it's going to sound weird. Can you please sit down? 
What? The praise and worship leader saying, sit down? Actually, I'm able to uh, share a little bit. Uh, and I thank the pastor and, and uh, Keith. And just, I, I thank for being here. I thank, I thank God for allowing me to be here. You know, the COVID thing really shut my doors for a whole year. And it drove me crazy. Because I'm a singer. I'm a Christian singer that uses music. Uses music to bring across a message that changes lives. I believe that. I believe that very strongly. And I was going, you know, Lord, why are we allowing this to happen? He never told me. I still don't know why. But I'm waiting. You know, figure sooner or later he'll tell me. But today, what a beautiful day to go out finally again. It's Father's Day. Oh, yeah, I'm ready to celebrate the ultimate father. How about you all? You know, I'm a father, I'm a father of four. I have an oldest daughter and three sons. I wish I could say they're all pastors. They're not. Does that make me a bad father? No. It makes me a father who loves his kids a bunch and has tried his best to be as godly a man as I can be. Practical godly man. What's that mean? Well, it means I don't stand on the street corner and you'll repent and you guys follow me. It means every time they have a challenge at their, at their schools, I tried to reason with them in the best way in a godly foundation. And that sometimes that's hard. That's hard in the secular schools because they went, they went to public schools. I wanted them to do that. I, I didn't have the courage to do the uh, homeschooling. I didn't. I, I'm a lousy teacher. I, I didn't want them to go under me. That's terrible. But guys, I, my foundation, my past has a lot, a lot of experience that now I look back, you know, 20, uh, hindsight's 2020. And watching how God's plan was for me was amazing, which makes me a very thankful singer. It makes me a very thankful Christian man. And I wanted, my, I wanted to do my best for my kids as a father. And incidentally, fathers, uh, let me see the fathers out here. Come on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, every once in a while, we got to give ourselves a little slap in the hand. You know, come on. Mothers always get Mother's Day, and, and they deserve it. But every once in a while, we fathers get, yeah, all right, Dad, good job. But when I was uh, in Secular Rock, which was uh, um, in the 70s, I came from a family, my mom and dad, I can't blame anything on them. They were fantastic parents. I came from a little bitty town that knew everything I was, was doing. Hated it. Wanted to leave there as quick as possible. Now I wish I was back. But my mom was Catholic. My dad was Lutheran. And it was a tug of war for me. And it started almost dividing up our, our family a little. And finally, my parents had enough wisdom to say, John, you pick the, when you're old enough, you pick the church you want to go to. I said, great, I won't go. I believed in God. Did I have any idea about Jesus? No. Jesus was just another name in the Bible that I never read. But I, I prayed to God every night. I believed in him. Went to college. Got into a band. Because I'd been in bands my whole high school years. It was one of those things where I really liked playing rock and roll. It was an exciting music form for me. I really liked it. I, but I liked the harmonies. I liked this kind of thing. I was a singer. And so I went to college and I went as an aeronautical astronomical engineer. That lasted until the space program collapsed and all those guys were pumping gas and delivering groceries. And I said, why am I wrecking my brain to go deliver groceries? I'm going to go from very specific to very general. It's easier. So I became a civil engineer. And about that time, I'm in a band called Head East and we're playing... Oh, uh, well, well, thanks, thanks, guys. All right. Yeah. And you in Kansas City were really kind to us in Head East, I'm telling you right now. Um, but, you know, we, we, um, I was looking at a school and finally had to quit the band because my dad said, John, you can do anything you want, but you're going to get a degree first. My dad. My dad was amazing. 
Was he perfect? No, but he was someone I respected. And because of that, I got a college degree. Praise God. Dad made a difference. So I get this degree, and I go out with the band again. Uh, I'm the man. In fact, I promised my professors I'd never be an engineer. That's how I graduated. Uh, <laughs> needless to say, I, I wasn't the top of my class by any means. But though it's funny, the professors knew it. I mean, they knew why. I never went to school. So I was always in the dean's office going, he goes, John, you're, you're a smart guy, but you just never go to school. I said, well, damn, doing this in the band, I'm going to be a rock singer. I, I really, I'm just getting a degree from my dad. And he looks at me, he shakes his head, and he, I walk out. And, anyway, I got, I got that degree, and that, the day I took my final exam, I was in the band again. The band exploded, thanks to folks like here in Kansas City, St. Louis, the Midwest especially. And we, we uh, now I'm, I'm going to use the word blessed, but although I wasn't a Christian at the time, we were stupidly blessed. We were, it was amazing. We did our own record. It, it exploded. Uh, it was in every section of the country. It went number one at one time or another. The problem, it never went at the same time. But it opened up a door for us to do tour in every major place that ever existed. Uh, the only problem with that is that I've got a family at home. I've got a wife and at that time two kids. And they'd like to see me. Well, we were so popular, or it was doing so well, that we were never home. At the end of one tour, I'd call my wife, I'm coming home tomorrow, babe. And then about that time, we get a message. Oh, incidentally, you're on, the, uh, Peter you're on the Peter Frampton tour. That'll be two months. Oh, good. Uh, babe, remember that, be home? I'll, I'll see you in two months. And it was driving me crazy. And the next most important thing is you discover that even if it's a dream, and I want you to know being part of Head East and, and getting a record deal and touring these amazing tours is a musician's dream. It really is. But if you do it every day, seven days a week, it gets old. Your dream gets old. So backstage, you try to figure out what can be different than yesterday? And in my case, it was just drinking a little more, drinking a little more, drinking a little more. Because back then, water wasn't cool. It didn't come in bottles that's more expensive than gas. <laughs> it, it, it was, beer was the water backstage, and I drank a lot of it. And then all of a sudden, somebody introduced me to cocaine. And, I, and there's some people that care less about it. I'm afraid I wasn't one of them. It was my... It was my thing. So much so that the band actually fired me in 1980 because I was just too messed up. Uh, just, had a, just had a meeting with, with uh, the guys that actually fired me, Roger and Steve, and I thanked them. I said, you couldn't, thank you guys. It was really good that you did it. Because for the next five years, I, I became a Christian. And that's a long story too. Yeah, praise God. I became a Christian because it was either that or suicide. That's how close the enemy had me. But God had me stronger. He had me, I'm telling you. Became a Christian, got in the word major. And I couldn't figure out why. Because I'm not a ma I wasn't a major reader at that time, but boy, the Bible just fed me big time. But guys, think about it. Twelve years, seven years of learning how to be a front man for a band. Five years of becoming us something other than a baby Christian. And bing, bang, boom, Bob Hartman calls me. The founder of the biggest Christian rock band in the world. And says, we need a singer. And right then I said, oh my gosh, those 12 years. I'm ready. Yeah. I'm ready. And he says, would you think, would you like to say, yeah, let's do it. And he goes, well, don't you think you should pray about it? <laughs> yeah. I knew though. I knew. I knew it. From the word he when he said it, and that was had nothing. I, I hadn't thought of that at all. I was done singing. Those five years, I was an, I was an engineer. I had the American dream. My family was going to a fantastic church. My kids were going to Christian school. I had my first home. Uh, the American dream. And the minute I thought that, God goes, "This isn't it. 
don't get rid. This is not it, John. There's something more. And I said that to my wife. My wife goes, what do you think it is? I says, I have no idea. Remember, music was gone. Had, I, it was gone. Was I a Petra fan? Yes. But I was a Petra fan and disappointed because I had blown it so bad in the secular world that there's no way God could ever use me in the, in the Christian world. You know, typical Christian thinking he knows God's plan. And all of a sudden, Bob, and I, I, I could not believe it. And the next 20 years, guys, I've seen God use five of the most strange guys to do some, to be tools for the most amazing things. And I thank my God for that. This is so cool this Father's Day. Seriously, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. He's, a, he's the Lord who loves us. And, and think about it. not only well, is he father, he sent his son to suffer for us. And what's even cooler, his son said yes. I mean, we're talking about a bing bang, we're, we're talking a, a major combination here. A father who loves his son beyond our understanding. Sent it, sent him to die for us because he loves us too. We're his kids too. Through the blood of Christ, through the acceptance of knowing He's our Savior, we're His family. So, fathers, if somebody says, "Well, how do you know how to be a good father?" Just say, "Well, I'm looking up. I'm looking up. I'm following the. I'm following the Father. I'm reading the Word." And men, not only our flesh and blood, but we have responsibility for the generation coming. Do I mean we're supposed to go and adopt everybody? No, I mean we're supposed to be examples of godly men. And that, and like I said before, that doesn't mean the only way you do that is stand on a street corner and yell repent. It means being a good example at your workplace. It means being a good example on the playgrounds when you're with your kids and the other kids are watching you. And they ask, why is your dad so cool? Why is your dad so nice? Because, well, and of course they won't say because he's a Christian, but it'll get around. Because he's my dad. Praise God. That's so cool. Listen, I thank you for the time, and I, 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 I don't want to take any more, but I've got one more song I want to do for you. And thank, <laughs> I like you guys. You, you're a good crowd. I'm liking you guys a lot. Anyway, this song was, was, actually, was actually on a record that I think was so underrated that I wish we could put it out again. It's actually the title cut. And when we retired, when we doing on our farewell tour, we, we talked to a lot of people. That was one of the reasons why we did the farewell. And this song was probably mentioned more than any other Petra song. And you go, oh, no, no possible way. Yeah, it was. A little song called No Doubt. There are times when you feel like you can't go on There are times when you feel like giving in And there are times when you feel like you can't try anymore There are times of trouble and believe I This test of your faith will last As long as it takes to pass And you have no more doubt you'll endure And your faith will emerge true and pure No doubt it'll be alright With God Yeah. Uh -huh.
is a time to take a reckless leap of faith And there's a time to be cautious and wait And there's a way of learning from the past But this time of trouble won't last It's sometimes we God bless you guys. Remember, we are the family of God. We are the soldiers of Jesus Christ. We, he's got a plan for each one of us. And again, I'm going to say this one more time. God bless you and please sit down.